It's when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. I love the message of this song. I'm not on an eagle trip. I'm nothing on my own. I make mistakes and often slip. Just common flesh and bone. But I'll prove someday just what I say. I'm of a special kind. When he was on the cross, I was on his mind. The look of love was on his face, thorns were on his head, his blood was on his scarlet robe. It stained it crimson red Though his eyes were on the crowd that day He looked ahead in time When he was on the cross I was on his mind Yes, he knew that a beautiful song the words to that song it always gives me chills uh, I've been looking forward to tonight and I hope uh, that you look forward to what I'm about to do I do this from time to time with y'all you know uh, Paul told Timothy a young preacher uh, not only to study God's word not only to uh, preach God's word as we do in the uh, assembly all the time. He also told him to publicly read God's Word. And uh, I think that's missing a lot in our churches. Uh, uh, I try to do it when we start a book and when we end a book. Uh, you know, growing up, I can't ever remember hearing a whole book of the Bible read in church, but it, uh, every time you read a book, uh, verse to verse from the front to back, you'll learn something every time. And uh, there's something about public reading and sitting and listening that uh, is just different enough that you might pick things out as well. But uh, I purposely didn't, didn't read this again this year. Uh, coming up tonight, I've been looking forward to it. It's an account of the resurrection that I put together uh, a few years ago. It's a harmony of the Gospels, uh, all four Gospels. And uh, uh, I did the best I could in trying to put everything in a timeline, and uh, I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you learn something, but uh, most of all, let's just uh, put our minds on thanking God for the resurrection, what we have through the resurrection, and just uh, reliving this wonderful event tonight together. And of course, every one of these words come out of uh, God's Word, so... Uh, just sit back. I wish I could tell you where to turn, but uh, I could. Uh, the first thing I'm going to read is out of Luke. The next one's out of Mark. So you understand why you're just going to be listening. So I pray that you enjoy this and it brings you a spiritual blessing tonight. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left, and it was the third hour. 
Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene, and that disciple whom he loved. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be the Christ, the chosen of God. Likewise, also the chief priests mocking said among themselves with the scribes, He saved others, himself he cannot save. Let Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the King of the Jews, save yourself. And a superscription was written also over him in letters of Greek and in Latin and in Hebrew. This is the King of the Jews. And one of the criminals which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other one, answering, rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, seeing that thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me, when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. And one ran and filled a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a reed and offered him to drink. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. At this time they set a vessel full of vinegar and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth when jesus therefore had received the vinegar he said it is finished and he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost and behold at that very moment the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom and the earth did quake and the rocks rent and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. And all the people that came together to that site, beholding the things which were done, smote their breast and returned home. All of his acquaintances with the women that followed him from Galilee stood afar off, beholding all these things. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was a high day, <laughs> besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken from the cross. Then came the soldiers and broke the legs of the first criminal and of the other which was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true. And he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. And again another scripture saith, they shall look upon him whom they have pierced. Joseph of Arimathea was an honorable counselor and a rich man, which also waited for the kingdom of God. 
he came and went in boldly unto Pilate and craved the body of Jesus. Now Joseph had not consented to the counsel and the deed of the others in condemning Jesus. And Pilate marveled that Jesus was already dead. Calling unto him the centurion, he asked him whether Jesus had been any while dead. And when he knew it of the centurion, he gave over the body to Joseph. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night. He brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. Then took they the body of Jesus and wound it in linen clothes with spices, as the manner of the Jews is, to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new sepulcher, wherein was never a man laid. There laid they Jesus, therefore because of the Jews' preparation day, for the sepulcher was nigh at hand. And Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph, behold, where they laid him. They were sitting over against the sepulcher. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments, and they rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. Now the next day that followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said, while he was yet alive, After three days I will rise again. Command, therefore, that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away, and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead. So the last era shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, Ye have a watch, go your way, make it as sure as you can. So they went and made the sepulcher sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven, and he came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint the body. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was already rolled away, for it was very great. So they entered into the sepulcher. They were much perplexed thereabout. Then Mary Magdalene runneth ahead of the others and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said unto them, They've taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher and we know not where they have laid him. The other women beheld two men who stood by them in the sepulcher who wore shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth. They said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? And one of them said unto them, Be not affrightened. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth. He was crucified, but yet he is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, the Son of Man must be delivered in the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. And they remembered His words. But go your way and go quickly and tell His disciples that He is risen from the dead. And behold, He goeth before you into Galilee. There ye shall see Him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples' word. Now the other woman, Mary Magdalene, went to tell the disciples, Behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. They came and held him by the feet and worshipped. Then said Jesus, Be not afraid. 
Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. Now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priest all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews unto this day. All the women now came and told the disciples what had happened. But their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulcher, and that other disciple went with him. And they came to the sepulcher, so they ran both together, but the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulcher. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw all the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulcher, and seeth the linen clothes lie, and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the other clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scriptures that he must rise again from the dead, but the disciples went away again unto their own home. But Mary stayed and stood without at the sepulcher weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down, looking again into the sepulcher, and seeth the two angels in white sitting, the one at the head, the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus, Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, Master. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say unto them that I ascend unto my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. So Mary came to the disciples again and told them that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. Now Peter and the others wondering in themselves at that which was come to pass. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about threescore furlongs. And they talked together of all the things which had been happening and it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one with another as ye walk? And you're sad. And the one of them whose name was Cleophas answered, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? Hast thou not known the things which are come to pass these last days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed and in word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death, and they have crucified him. But we trusted that he had been the one that should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women of our company made us astonished, which were very early at the sepulcher today, when they found not his body. They came saying that they had seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. Certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher. They found it just as the women said, but they didn't see him. 
Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered all these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village, whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further with them. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. So he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he said at meat with them, he took bread, and he blessed it, and he brake it and gave it unto them. And their eyes were opened, and they immediately knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did our heart not burn within us while he talked with us by the way? And while he opened unto us the holy scriptures. And they rose up that same hour and returned unto Jerusalem. And found the eleven gathered together. And them that were with them saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in breaking bread. But the others neither believed they them. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and afraid. And they supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are you troubled? Why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of a honeycomb. And he took it and did eat before them. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which are written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the Scriptures. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in His name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Then said Jesus unto them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas was also with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, standing in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then, then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. Reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. 
After these things, Jesus so showed himself again to the disciples at the sea, and on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon, Peter, and Thomas called Didymus, and Nathanael of Cana of Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and, the two, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go fishing. They saith unto him, We also go with thee. So they all went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast your net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. So they cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of the fishes. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fishing coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from the land, but as it were about two hundred cubits, dragging the net with all of the fish. As soon as they were come to the land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereupon, and bread. Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of the great fishes, a hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus said to them, Come and dine with me. And none of the disciples asked him, Who, who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth it to them, and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples, after that he had been risen from the dead. So when they had died, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, you know that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. He said unto him the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou were young, you girdest thyself, and you walked whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another will gird thee, and they will carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by what death Peter should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following close, which also leaned on, on Jesus' breast at the supper, and said, Lord, what shall this man do? Jesus said unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come back, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Then the eleven disciples went away again unto Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some still doubted. Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven, and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen.
And when he had spoken these things, he led them out as far as Bethany. And he lift up his hands and he blessed them. When it came to pass, while he blessed them, that he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And he was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner. And ye have seen him as ye have seen him go into heaven. So they returned unto Jerusalem with great joy from the mount called Olives, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And they were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. The Apostle Paul said, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that He was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that He was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain, remain unto this present day but some have fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then all of the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also, as one born out of due time. This is the word of faith, the gospel which we preach, that if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Now this I say, brethren, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruption must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruption shall I put on incorruption, and this mortal shall I put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying, That is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my brethren, be ye steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. How can you add to God's Word? As I said this morning, everything that we believe, everything that we have, everything that we teach, hinges upon the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, it is our only hope. Uh, Brother Smith asked something in class this morning, and I thought it was uh, a very good question, and I want to share it with you tonight. He said the Bible talks a lot about hope. Uh, and he asked about what does that word hope mean. You know, we have watered down the word hope. Uh, when we say we hope something happens, it's something we desire. We don't know if it's going to happen, but we, we desire that that's what happens. That's not the biblical word hope at all. The biblical word hope comes from the Greek word that means a confident expectation. So biblically, when we say our hope is in Jesus, it means we confidently expect. When when we say we hope for the resurrection, we are confidently expecting the resurrection. The verse that I read this morning 
there in 1 Corinthians 15 that said, But now Jesus is risen from the dead and become the first fruits of those that sleep. <laughs> Jesus' resurrection not only proves, but gives us evidence that we will rise from the grave, these old bodies. Uh, do y'all mind looking at one thing with me? Y'all turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Uh, if I can share with you just briefly uh, this morning in my Sunday school class, and, and y'all will probably hear this next Easter Sunday because it's my favorite text uh, in regards to the uh, resurrection. Uh, Job, in, in the book of Job, is what we looked at in Sunday school class this morning. With all that Job was going through, uh, he looked to something beyond his life to give him joy. It was Job during the most difficult time of his life that said, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and upon this earth he will stand in the latter day. That in my flesh I will see God, even though <laughs> it's going to be corruption and, and be eaten by, by worms. That in my flesh I will see God. Job held on to the hope the confident expectation of being resurrected and being with Jesus forever. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and look down to verse 13, we are given these verses to comfort us, to strengthen us, and to encourage us. Uh, can I remind you of the last verse that I read there, what the Apostle Paul said? He said, knowing your labor is not in vain. Folks, we serve a risen Savior, we have a sure reward coming. The things that we do for Christ after salvation are not in vain. These words should encourage us to that point, should strengthen us, and it should get us to where we can look beyond the old terrible things of this earth. Look at verse 13 in chapter 4 of First Thessalonians. Certainly you've heard these verses before. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Verse 14, for if we believe, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, y'all notice that if there? If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, meaning the same way, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent or precede those that are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. The Bible tells us if the Spirit of God that rose Jesus from the dead is living in you, He will also rise your mortal bodies. Isn't it wonderful that not only do we read the account of the resurrection and something miraculous. You know, it's one thing to think about the Red Sea parting or... Uh, countless miracles in the Bible. The resurrection is a miracle that we're going to get to take part in. Y'all realize that? It is a miracle that started 2,000 years ago and it's going to last until the rapture. Because the same power that rose Jesus from the grave, the same thing that allowed Him to step out of the spirit realm back to this earth in flesh is going to do the same thing to us. Paul says, comfort one another with these words. As Job says, in my flesh, I will see God. You know, I don't understand everything there is to understand by no means. Sometimes the more I study, it seems like the less I understand. Or the less I'm sure about some things. Uh, but I do know this. I know it. It is my hope. It is my confident expectation. And... It's normally what I'm living for. I say normally because I get caught up in life just like you do at times. It won't be very long. And I'm going to point at you and tell you I told you so. Y'all just wait. It's coming. It will not be very long 
that we in this room will be standing shoulder to shoulder in glorified body serving the Lord upon this earth. Amen. And I, be, I believe we'll remember days like this. I really do. We'll be on this earth serving Him. Like we should have been doing in our earthly life. That day is coming so soon, guys. So soon. I don't know about you, but uh, I don't just hope the way we use that word. I expect it to happen. I am confident that it is coming. Last thing I want to leave you with, and this uh, gives you a little uh, preview of our lesson coming Wednesday night. Uh, we're going to be looking at 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, I want to tell you about our glorified bodies. I want to tell you exactly what we're going to be like. Notice I'm saying I want to. It don't mean I'm going to. <laughs> uh, the Bible actually tells us, John told us, uh, I don't know what we're going to be like. John said this. This was under inspiration. I, I don't know what our bodies are going to be like, but I do know this, and I'm quoting John, we're going to be like him. And we're going to get to see him as he is. So whatever Jesus was as he stepped out of the grave, John says we're going to be like him. Uh, I know Jesus could eat. Uh, I know they could touch him. Uh, I know he could also walk through the wall. So uh, whatever Jesus is and his glorified body, so we will be for eternity with him. And we're going to get to see and talk to him in his fullness. Without any veil of sin, and I'm talking about our veil, what a day that will be. I, I, mm. can, can you just stop and imagine in your mind, with loved ones side by side, getting to sit with every person you've ever loved at the feet of Jesus and just listen to him. What a day that will be. And it's going to be before we turn around twice. And I'm going to point at you and say, I told you so. <laughs> Is there any word that needs to come before us tonight before we're dismissed? Even though Easter is a man-made holiday, and I hope you understand how I say that, uh, it's never wrong to uh, reflect on the resurrection of Jesus or the birth of <coughs> Jesus as in Christmas. I hope you've had a blessed day. I hope you've had a spiritually blessed day. And I hope you leave here a little more thankful and a little more confident of what we have in our dear Savior. And I hope that causes you to work just a little bit harder for Him while we're on this earth.